Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing a bit of a double episode. So I'm going to show you basically the wiring setup for the Viva brushless motor controller and the motor itself, motor running, and this new display that I got in here. This was the 17 bucks, I think it was, off AliExpress. So I'm going to run down how to wire it all in to this controller, so this controller is pretty common, so wire it into this controller and display the functions that it, it's able to display. So for this one, this one is supposed to be able to display speed, voltage, kilometers traveled, and what's battery capacity, so whatever's left in the battery. There's also a high beam switch and a left and right turn signal, but if you look, if you look closely at the board, which might be a bit hard to bring that in, um, you can actually see that there are a huge amount of features available to it. So you've got three speed, a few other things as well, but we're going to have a, um, a look at just setting it up for our basic system, which is just basically for me, voltage control and battery capacity. That's all I really care about. The rest of it, not hugely important to me. All right, so off the bat, this is what we got delivered. This is what got delivered from AliExpress. So the product looks... You know, I'm really happy with the quality of it. It's not waterproof at all, but um, I guess I can make a shroud or something to sort of run it in. Um, it comes with only a very short amount of cable, as you can see here. So I've got it plugged in at the moment just to this switch. I'll just connect it. I'll show you. So from here, it comes with a very short amount of cable. Now, I also opted for the model that comes with this flat six pin plug. So the advantage of getting it with this plug means you can pull the wires out easily and wire it into your own system, which is gonna be really valuable later on. So you'll notice when you're browsing, um, most of these display units will come with either a round plug or a square plug, but there'll be a sealed unit. If you look for the one that has one of these plugs on it, which is what I've done, six pin, you can pull the um, you can pull the cables out and then put either put your own plug on there or splice it into any of the other existing setup that you've got. So for me, I'll show you how to do it. It's very easy as well. So if we were to plug, for example, one of these back in, let's say, I'll show you. So the pins come in on this side, like this, and they go in oh, like this. All right. So when you get the plug, some people just cut them off and then strip the wires back, but they're actually really easy to get out. So if you've got something to poke in there, a pen or for anything else. So I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver. I reckon that's what I've got on hand. So what I've got here, I'll use the back of, use the, back of the vernier. So if you have a look here, You'll see the, the pin is inside there. And there's a little tiny tag that sort of catches it in there. So if you can get something sharp down there, which I will, I'll get the tip of this vernier down there. You just put this in. You flatten that, you flatten that little tab and you pull out. And you'll see this will just come straight out very easily. You can get it out without damaging it. And that allows you to add, which I've got here just from JCAR. This is just a set of leads with clamps on it. It allows you to then test the circuit on whatever it is that you're building, so your project. In my case, because I'm building a scooter, I'm gonna be testing it on the rest of this motor control. Right, so, a few things to note about this. Uh, like I said, five pin plug. Tr try to get the five pin plug, plug if you can. Uh, these are hole centers on this, I think we're 75. So this is six mil. Or five, it's actually 5.5 mil, but six mil will fit. And we have approximately centers here about 75, so about 75 hole centers there. So when you're mounting it, remember 75 for your bracket or whatever it is you're going to make. Um, I would recommend siliconing this and maybe a bit of heat shrink on it to make it just a little bit more waterproof because this it's going to sit up like that, so obviously water will drain will drain off, but um, it's not waterproof at all. Now, what I've done, testing all of this, I've actually worked out what all the wires do, and part of this video is gonna be actually just going through this motor controller 
and just explaining what all the wires do because I found that I wasn't able to get any information online that was actually gonna help me to a great extent. So, we're gonna have a quick look at this and I'll show you what I've done here. It looks a little bit messy, but it's actually really simple. So, I've got, 12, I've got a 48 volt power supply. So that's this battery here running straight into this here. This is just a terminal strip. So these are about two bucks from JCAR. How the terminal strip works is one side of the terminal strip is clamped down by whatever wire you put in. And then the other side just continues on whatever that was on that circuit. So for example, I've got 48 volts going in this red one. I have 48 volts going into the controller. It just clamps them and basically joins them together. It allows me, you can use them for general electrical applications as well. So it can, they can be a permanent fixture, but for me, I'm just using it right now to test it. Now, I'm gonna grab some other, how I'm gonna connect it inside the scooter might be a bit different to this, but the wiring will remain exactly the same. So, what these wires all are, this is obviously your um, neutral, got your power, going into the controller, blue, yellow, green, are your phase wires for your motor. So they all have to match up to this cable here on the um, on the motor. You have a look here, I've just bolted this, this down. It's not gonna let me, there we go. I've just bolted this down to here so I can test run it as well. So we'll see whether that runs and we'll be able to sort of see what kind of power we get out of it, how it runs, is it smooth, the rest of that. We'll test that run, we'll test run that as well. But phase wise, now, this here is your hall sensor. So this plug is your hall sensor plug or hall plug. So it's not labeled on any diagram I could find. Um, so I just thought I will test everything, which I have. And that seems to be the hall sensor. So how this, this works for this uh, motor, and I'm, just, I'm only going by the colors here, I'm gonna assume you've got a controller for power and the three phases, that's why they're color coded. Now, when you buy this, so I know we're, we're talking about something completely different now, when you buy this or any other heads up display or display unit, you'll notice it comes with a plug that's exactly the same as this. And you'll be tempted to just plug it straight in because it looks like it should go there. It doesn't. I've tested all of these and I've tested everything on that end. Even though the plug's the same, it's a, just a generic plug that they use for um, anything that has five or six pins. It doesn't actually plug straight in. When you want to get this to work, you're gonna to have to pull the plug off like I have and wire it in manually. But I'll explain that, it's not that, easy, not that hard. So this one here goes into the motor, very simple. So that's your hole sensor. You've got your three phases and you've got your power and earth or neutral here. Now, the rest of the wires. We'll start from the top, because it's pretty easy. On the Veva one, let me just make sure I'm sort of zoomed in. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so I'll just unplug this as well. So we've got our, uh, we've got our basic motor controller, accelerator, and switch here, just to test run it for now, because the rest of the bits haven't come in. Right, so from the top, I have, and I've tested all of these brakes. So, there's two black and purple wires, two sets of black and purple that both control the brakes. So what that is, is your regenerative braking. I've tested this, if you close the circuit, so if you run the motor, full speed, and you close the circuit by just bridging these two wires together. Now, by bridging, let's see if I've got a, um, something I can use for an example. So we've got, let's have a look at this here, right. Now let's pretend this is a cable here, right? I've got copper here, copper here. Now, how a switch works is, when you operate a switch, it pulls the contact in and joins the two together. So if you want the brakes to come on, you have to have a switch that joins these two plugs together. So if I was to put this in like that, that would join them together. Now, when I ran this full speed, when you bridge this, so either by a, a, a brake lever or a switch, it, it slows the motor, so it does work as a brake. That's both of them, so I've tested both of them. So both 
purple and black wires bro both work as that regenerative braking system. I'm guessing that's just that polarity reversal here, which will run into here. They'll have a sensor telling me, all right, reverse it, send it through this hall sensor into the motor, stops the motor, but or tries to reverse the motor. So that's what these two are. Brake lamp, this is the purple and orange, is the rear brake lamp switch. So that's all this does. It just operates your rear tail light. That's all it is. Um, you can wire that to be always on, always off, momentary. So when you hit the brake, it'll come on. It's up to you how you wire that one. But that's what purple and orange is. So this is this black, red, and gray wire. So this one here, again, no, um, no English markings on here. So I tested this one. This one is your speed or throttle controller. So it doesn't matter what type of throttle you have. I've got this one here. It does not matter what type you have. Those three wires are for that. You've got power, earth, and you've got your control wire here. That's what these are. So black, so red, black, gray, throttle. That's your, any throttle you put in will be this one. Now, you may have to pull these out, these pins out, to make it fit into another plug, which I'll have to do, because I'm gonna lengthen it, because I don't have enough cable to run from the top where the throttle's gonna be all the way through the scooter to where this is gonna be, inside the bed of the scooter. But that's what this one is. So that's your throttle controller. So we've done them, brakes, right. Right, electrical lock. So this is 48 volt power out from this controller and it goes straight to an electrical lock. You can turn this into a lock or a switch, it's up to you. This just controls whether or not the throttle will operate or not. But it also completes the circuit, so you can't run just the throttle without bridging this one. So, like I said, bridging is with a switch. Imagine a wire in here, connecting these two wires together permanently. As long as they're bridged, the throttle will operate. If this is not bridged, so in the off position, the throttle will not ever work. So you have to have some sort of switch in here, whether it's a key or a button switch or a momentary switch or any sort of switch. You can have a pressure switch where you put your foot, but it's gotta to, got to be on, the contact needs to be on for this to operate the throttle at all times. Uh, I'm guessing that's just the way the circuitry's ran in this motor control. This has to be in the on position, like a safety, right? So that's what this is. That's for your key switch, any key, key switch either. So we've got black and red out of the controller. Pretty straightforward, I knew that would be power. What it is though, is so it's 48 volt power. It's same as the, same as the switch lock, so same as the, the lock or the safety switch, 48 volt, 48 volt. The only difference is this is permanently 48 volts, the electrical switch. This one varies depending on your battery. So if your battery, like mine when I tested it was about 54 volts total output, you get 54 volts out of this. So this is what goes into this unit to power this on. So whatever voltage is coming from your battery just comes out straight through here. It doesn't change the voltage at all. Now this gray wire, uh, sorry, this brown and black, this one was an indicator switch. So this is what tells you, um, this is what you wire left and right indicators to. So brown and black is left and right indicator. So you have to put them on a double switch, which allows you to move it to one end or move it to the other end to come in. It also means you have to bridge two separate wires for this into this to make them both come on when they're supposed to come on. So this will just power up. It doesn't matter if you put left or right wire into this, it'll just power them on when there's a circuit. So you've got to wire both left and right into a switch and then back into this to give you power to run either side of the um, left and right switch. Pretty simple. This one here was the only one I couldn't really work out too easily off the bat. Now, what I have done is tested this with a multimeter and it seems like I'm getting, I'm getting different amps out of different wires. So I'm getting more amps out of the blue than I am out of the yellow one. Same as voltage, you get slightly different voltage out of one and the other. That means that this would be your three speed controller. So this is what controls the motor output. So 
because this supports up to three speed motor control so you'll see on, uh, on some of the ads or some of the um, uh, seller pages you'll see you'll buy a throttle kit like this that instead of having this sort of display it'll have a switch that will have one two three or run normal turbo whole bunch of different languages they use for that but it's three speed so basically all this does is regulate voltage whichever voltage you switch to back into the controller and then it feeds that back to the motor so it gives it a maximum gives the motor phases a maximum output so if this is switched on low obviously your maximum output to the motor will be lower normal is whatever that set point is and high will be whatever that set point is now i can't i don't know exactly what those set points are but that's what this is so if you want to want if you want to run a an eco mode a normal mode and then a turbo mode for example that's what this wire does this just changes the um available output to the motor so it's a three that's a three-way switch for that one um very easy to wire that in i probably won't be using it. i just want go and stop i mean that's plenty for me um also worth noting, so with this, um, this was marketed as having a reverse switch as well. Reverse switch, headlight switch, and a few other things that it just doesn't come with. So now that I've tested every one of these wires, I know what they all do. There is no reverse, there's no headlight, there is, there's a few other things I can't remember, but what I've listed here is what you actually get. Now, as soon as you open the box and you have a look at it, they could list 400 items and you'd go, well, there's a lot of wires there. Maybe it's one of those. Unfortunately, this is the, these are the only features you get out of this, but it's enough for building a scooter. So I would still recommend this motor controller. Um, um, the more I look online, this Vever brand seems to be a little bit more common and a little bit more reputable than some of the other ones anyway. So I'm really happy with that. So we'll have a quick look at this and I'll show you what this one does as well. So this is your, um, this is your display unit. Um, I'm just trying to get this to focus a little bit for me. Probably doesn't want to. There we go, beautiful. All right, so this is your display unit. Now, I'll just quickly explain what all these wires do, because I've also tested these. Um, this is a fair few wires that come out of here. You've got, just from here, you've got black and red. Obviously, the black and red, black and red wires are gonna be your main power wires. I'll see if I can get this just to focus. There we go. So you've got black and red, your main power wires. You've got orange, which is indicator left. Brown was indicator right. I oh, know. Oh, brown is headlight. So this has the support for a headlight. So you've got brown as headlight. You've got indicator left, orange. Indicator right is blue. And there's one more purple wire here. So this purple wire, unfortunately, my motor controller, so this feather one, doesn't support this purple wire. So what this is, uh, normally, out of this hall plug here, not, well not normally, but occasionally out of the hall plug, you'll have a, um, a sixth wire. So you'll see here, but you can't really see it. There should be a sixth wire in here. Oh, I'll just get it to phase, there we go. There should be a six wire, or sometimes there is a six wire. Now, you've got your three phases, you've got your power and you've got your earth. The six wire is a sensor for speed. So I think it reads it off, it either reads it off the RPM or it reads it off something else inside the motor. But that wasn't wired in, so I haven't got that on mine, which means I can't get speed reading off this which is a little bit of a bummer because I was actually really hoping I would get the speed reading. But if anyone else knows how I can get a speed reading from the DC motor across the phases to this, let me know because I'd love to know how to do it because I actually can't work out how to do it. And I was here trying to test it for ages last night. Now, also you'll notice there's a yellow wire hanging off. That is just your park brake or park signal. So it doesn't actually stop the motor, it just triggers a park on the screen. So just a P for park. That's all it does. If it doesn't actually cut anything off, it's actually bypassed at the moment by the switch I have here. So I'm thinking, once I get this actually running with the switch, the other switch I've ordered, perhaps I can get it so that park 
either turns off this display because there isn't an off button, either turns the display off or actually works like a park switch. So when, the, when it's switched off, park comes up here and it doesn't drive. Current state, if I power this on, so if I, if I give this power, I can run it off any of the, if I run this off at say the 48 volt line here, and I give this power, running full noise, it still won't stop. So the park doesn't actually do anything, it just signals the park here. So it's more sort of a, a display setup than a, an actual functional switch. This one here, I still haven't worked out what this one does. All I know is if I disconnect it, it doesn't tell me the battery capacity. If I connect, if, sorry, yeah, if I disconnect it, it, I get the battery capacity come up and it's accurate. I can measure the, um, the, the availability of the battery. If I plug it together, that goes away. I don't know exactly what this one does yet, but I'll find it out and then I'll, I'll make sure I let everybody know what that is. So this just looks like it just links up together, um, but I can't exactly tell what it does or what it's for. But what we'll do quickly, I'll just wire it in. I'll show you the features of the, um, the setup itself. So this is currently wired up to a 48 volt battery, uh, 15 amp hour, and I'll just plug it all in. I'll show you how it works and we'll just do a quick speed test on it. All right, before we start running anything as well, what we will do is quickly plug in the motor controller just to complete the circuit. So I'm gonna grab these ones, these two here. I'm gonna plug them in just for testing purposes. So we're gonna grab this one. So this one goes into here. Like that. And then we've got the lock switch, which plugs into here. Like that. Now, before anything else will work, we need to make sure that the hall sensor, which is this one here, is plugged into the motor. So we'll plug that one in, like this. All right. Now, with everything connected, if I grab this and I switch it on, I have power. So now it's displaying that I have power to the rest of the system. So if I turn this off and I unplug hall sensor, I turn it on, motor doesn't operate. If I turn this off, plug this in, Turn this back on again. We've got power, if I turn, you can hear the motor running. Now, you can't see it because it's not in frame, but I will change the camera angle so you guys can see the motor running. What I will do too is quickly test uh, the other features of this. So we've got indicator lights. So let's find here. All right, so we've got indicator light. If I hit so orange and black, orange and black off here, indicator. You'll see the right turn signal for the orange one. If I pull this off and I go brown, brown one, you'll see headlight. It's a bit hard to see. The headlight one is very, very hard to sort of bring up. I'm hoping you guys can see it. There we go. So headlight on, which is the brown wire. And I will find blue, blue wire. So the blue wire is, where are we? Right signal, I believe. There we go. Blue wire is the right signal. Now, if I plug all of these in at the same time, I can get it to do, it, it'll, it'll multi-function. So if I got the blue one in here and I've got I got both in here. I can get them both to function at the same time. So all I gotta do is put that on a switch and then you can have left and right. Pretty simple setup from there, just a switch left. You'll have a left switch and a right switch or you'll have a toggle switch with uh, zero center, then left activated, right activated, very simple. All right, so. Quickly adjust the photo, just bear with me for a second. We will adjust the angle so that you can see the motor running at full noise. If you have a look at this, I've bolted it down so that it can't sort of fly away on me, but 
Very low speed. That's full noise. It's a little bit noisy, but it's not too bad. Um, I'm actually really happy with how smooth it is and um, the bearings feel great in this and it's very stable too. There's almost no movement or vibration in that shaft at all. That's full noise. Beautiful. All right, that's running really well. I'm very, very impressed with that setup. Very easy to wire it in too, so don't be too stressed about it. Um, one thing I will be doing is be changing probably a lot of these plugs over to something uh, that's easy to get. So I've just got from JCAR some simple plugs here. So I go here. These are from, so these are just three pin. You can get these from JCAR. They're off the shelf. It means next time you need them, um, you'll be able to replace them pretty easy. I might still wire this into a fuse block inside the base of the scooter. That was still probably my original plan. Um, and to do that a little bit neater than using this massive test piece here, I'm actually just gonna use either one of these. These were a dollar, dollar fifty maybe or one of these and just mount it nice and neat inside the base of the scooter. So that's probably what we'll be doing. Sorry, part of that video just cut out. I think it went too long. What we will do, we'll have a quick look at this drive wheel as well. Now, this is a 5M sprocket. That's just the size. That's just the spacing between these teeth here. I don't know how many teeth are on it. I haven't measured them or counted them yet. That's about five mil there. The belt you need for this, so this is the same as the um, the front wheel, which we've got just here, which I can show you. Got that here, that's the front one. Front and rear, it's red, don't really care too much about the color. I was hoping it'd come in a black, but it is what it is. Um, this is, I'm really happy with this. It's it, It'll do the job I need it to do. Let me see if I can just try and get this to focus a little bit better. Yeah, beautiful. So you got your 10 mil, I think these are 10 mil, I'll measure them just to make sure. We've got, what have we got here? See if I can get it in there. Yeah, 10 mil, 10 mil ID on those bearings. Bearings easy to replace. I've already pumped these ones up. You got the 5M sprocket built in, part of the hub. Two piece, so you can pull it apart. Very easy to pull apart. You've got about pumped up. About 55 actually, 55 mil wide, approximately. Uh, good tread, pretty simple. For this, what you guys will be needing, uh, sprock, uh, sorry, belt wise, if you can't, if it doesn't come with a, mine didn't come with a belt at all, but if you need a belt, um, this is the kind of belt you'll be using. This is a drive, uh, usually called a timing belt. Um, and this is a 740 long, Depends on your project. So the length is 740. 5M is the type of um, belt and sprocket. So the, the, the width of the teeth, uh, the distance between the teeth, I should say. Um, 740 is just the length of the belt. Now, that isn't 740 this way, long ways. That is 740, if you cut the belt, and you pull it out, that's 740 that way. That's how, that's how they measure the belt. So 740, you might think, oh, that's way too long. I don't need that. Once you wrap it around the sprocket, which I'll do here, for example, once it's wrapped around the sprocket, it's how much left you got. I mean, make sure you have enough here as well. So you might think, oh yeah, 300 will be fine, but 300 wrapped around the sprocket probably end you up about here. So this is probably still too long. It's just one I had to spare lying around, but I'll probably need, and I'm gonna just guess here, probably need around the 600 length for the belt so look around probably i think 642 is a size so it would be probably look for something that would be 642 or 640 5m 
that's going to be the belt you need for this sprocket. If you buy this wheel or any of the other ones that are very similar to this, they're all going to be exactly the same. 5M for this, and that means for the other side as well. So if we look down back here where we are before, this motor, right. If you look at the tip of the motor there, we're gonna need a sprocket here as well. So it'll be 12 mil OD, oh sorry, 12 mil ID for the sprocket, just to slip around this thicker part of the shaft here, it steps down to 10 mil and then you've got thread. So to fit on this part of the shaft, you can hear it's, it's milled here on the side so the grub screw can bite in, which is beautiful. You need to be 12 mil ID and then it needs to be a 5M sprocket for around there. Don't know how many teeth, probably around 32 to 40 teeth is what I'm probably guessing is what they sell because that's what I've seen online. Uh, but that's what you're gonna need for here. All right, so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. Mainly the wiring diagram is what I was interested in because there aren't many other videos that have or sort of explain what all of them do without having to sort of guess half of yourself. But that's what everything does on here. It's all been tested. Um, I know that I know everything works, which is great. So I'm happy with the controller. I'm really happy with the motor. The display is really cool. I think it looks great. And for $17, I mean, you can't really go wrong. That's an unreal price. This, um, like I said before in one of my other videos, um, I'm not hugely fond of this. Just just feels cheap, but I will be honest, it does have very smooth delivery for speed. It is very controllable. So that for that, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. Very impressed with this. You'll notice that actually it does bottom out before you reach the top. But it's actually really smooth delivery for controlling the speed. I'm actually really happy with that. The switch too, the switch is all right as well. Um, just, just the quality is just not there. Right, so just on the battery as well, um, it probably deserves its own full episode. So I'll do, I'll do a full episode on the battery, uh, what to do, what to buy, what not to buy, what to scam, because there's, I don't know, there's plenty of scams out there. I don't know what it is with batteries. They charge almost nothing for them, like 60 bucks, and then they just don't send them. It's happened twice to me already, so don't let it happen to you as well. Batteries don't really come in. From my experience, you, it's very hard to order a battery of AliExpress. Go from a reputable seller, even if you see the reviews, for some reason, that doesn't mean anything. Um, and I've still been scammed off that. So we'll do a full episode on the battery, uh, battery components, chargers. I've got this cool lighter um, charger I've got here. I'm gonna wire. I'm gonna flush mount it into the frame. So if we can just pick this up as well. Part of my plan is to, the charger is gonna be sort of flush mounted in the side of the flame, into the side of the frame, just with a little rubber grommet to keep the water out. Um, that way you don't have to have this messy cable sort of hanging off the side of the battery. So that'll look cool. Um, and then, yeah, I, I reckon a whole, whole video just for the battery. I'm not sure when I'll do that one. I'll probably start building this very shortly, but, um, I hope you liked the video. Um, if there's anything else you want to have a look at uh, or discuss, leave a message or a comment on the video and um, I'll, I'll do my best to get back to you guys. But um, yeah, overall, very happy with this display. The display is fantastic. Um, not high quality, but it is very bright. It looks great. Um, aesthetically, it looks fantastic. Um, Motor controller, if you do want to keep this part of the kit, I know I said I wasn't going to keep it. It's not too bad. It's very smooth at controlling the speed, so I'll give that a plus for that. I just don't like the, the whole construction of it. Um, apart from that, yeah, if, if it wasn't for the fact that it looks like this, I'd probably keep it, but um, I'm not happy with the way that's built. I'd rather buy something else or make something else that'll, that'll work better for me. Um, if there's any questions you have about the wiring, if I didn't cover anything off well enough, I know I made a quick mistake here. I said that the indicator switch was this brown and black one, which it isn't. It's actually the orange and black one, but I might see if I can cut that out of the video and look even smarter for you guys. But if there's anything else you need or you want me to test something or 
do anything else, let me know. Um, no dramas at all doing that. While it's all pulled out, it's probably a good time anyway um, because it's easy to get to. I'm not gonna stop with just on the wiring either. There's still a lot of wiring that needs to get done. I'm gonna show you guys how to make plugs, run new cable, fix cable inside. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of that part when I start building it. So stay tuned for the rest of it and I hope you enjoy this video. Peace out guys, thank you.